just heard C.J. Stroud. He said those iffy throws, they usually don't lead to interceptions. Yeah. And that confidence yeah. that he has when he drops back in the pocket and he sees something, he thinks he likes it. I'm letting he lets it, it go, rip right. because he knows my arm, my talent, my receivers, they're not going to let me throw interceptions. That's why this team believes in him yeah. and they follow him. Yeah, I, I hear that. He's found that fine line like we talked about <laughs> earlier of like aggressive but not reckless. He's amazing at yeah. that for a young quarterback. And today he's going to have some opportunities. Cleveland is so aggressive. Yep. They communicate so much on defense. Every now and then they'll blow an assignment. A guy in bump man to man, right? He slips and falls. You're going to see Nico Collins running down the field open. So there'll be a few chances. You've said that the 38-year-old Joe Flacco needs to be managed in this game. Right. You don't think so with the 22-year-old C.J. Playoffs, I mean, don't don't rein anybody <laughs> back. Let it rip. And I think C.J. Stroud knows when he moves up and the pressure's coming, keep my eyes down the field. I'll find somebody. I think that the Texans need to be more aggressive than Cleveland. You know wow. that by my talk here, right? But this is going to be fun. Stroud versus Browns defense. Yeah, watch it, NBC. It's awesome. I mean, the numbers, ba the numbers back you up because C.J. Stroud is doing something that not not only just rookies haven't done before in the NFL, but look at this: quarterbacks to lead the NFL in passing yards per game and touchdown to interception ratio in the same season. You got Joe Montana, you got Tom Brady, you got C.J. Yeah, go, go. <laughs> That's <laughs> incredible. Stroud. Let's get it to Jack. And for what it's worth, as we're listening in, C.J. Stroud, he did get college football playoff experience last year through four touchdowns against Georgia, put on a show in that game, came up just short. Of course, different caliber of test against Cleveland's defense. Yeah, he hadn't seen it. I mean, he had a fantastic year, but he hadn't seen a defense like this, the speed that they have at linebacker, the front seven, and the guys in the secondary like Martin Emerson and Denzel Ward and Grant Delpit. It should be outstanding today. For that Texans defense, the challenge, you heard Chris and Devin talk about Joe Flacco putting balls downfield. He's going to throw them. Who's going to come down with them? Moment of truth. Time now for the home team picks presented by Lowe's. 55% of the country likes the Browns. I am going with Cleveland as well, and I'm thinking this team could be a familiar test for the Ravens, who they already beat in Baltimore. Uh. All right, Rod, you. I'm going to go with the Texans. I'm going to go with the Texans. I'm a big believer in C.J. Shroud. I think um, he's going to step up against that man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, I'm taking the Cleveland Browns. I think it's going to be high scoring. I think it's going to be tight. And Joe Flacco is Mr. Cinderella. Playoff show. Playoff, <laughs> Playoff show. show. All right, Matthew, who are you going with? I'm going with the Texans. Listen, the Browns have been turning the ball over a lot this year and getting away with it. I don't think that happens tonight. Give me the Texans in a close one, Mike Florio. You know, Coach Dungy called Joe Flacco Cinderella. What have we seen with backup quarterbacks this year? Eventually, the chariot turns back into a pumpkin. I think that happens today. Give me the Texans as well, Ahmed. Ooh, all right, this is more even than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns. We saw what that defense can do, and that game was a blowout a couple weeks ago. I know there was no C.J. Stroud. Right. Browns defense is legit. Yeah. I'm going Houston. One, Rodney doesn't miss much in these picks. He's been yes, pretty sir. good. But I think this Houston's team, I think they're going to find a little bit of an edge on defense. They're going to come down with some of those interceptions. Before when they made some of those interceptions, they didn't have the offense ability without C.J. Stroud right, right. to take advantage. They have their guy back. They'll take advantage and get points off those turnovers today. What's wrong with you New England defensive safeties? Don't you like great defense? What's going on here? I love C.J. Stroud. You know that. But I love this Cleveland defense more. I think they are special. You've heard me say they're Super Bowl caliber. I like Cleveland to dominate this game, 28-13. So, Devin, you played in 24 postseason games. What are you trying to do in the first five minutes of the game to send a message? You want to set the tone. And I think whether you start on offense or defense, you want your best plays to come out early. I remember being in these games, Bill Belichick would say, I told the coordinators. Eight gold medals in Beijing in 2008. <laughs> the other one was in kindergarten at that time. But C.J. Stroud's no ordinary rookie. So, in my mind, I know he's a rookie. <laughs> yeah. But when I watch him on film, he doesn't look anything like a rookie. The poise, the movement in the pocket, the decision-making, and the way he's taking care of the football. 23 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. He's been very special to watch. Touchdown interception ratio led the NFL this year. On the other side, the story with Joe Flacco is remarkable, but he's playing some of the best football of his career. Yeah, unbelievable. He turns 39 next week. He was brought in to be a backup quarterback. Then he became the starter, the fourth starter for the Browns in the season. And all he's done is play great down the stretch in his five starts, including in this building the last time, 368 yards and three touchdowns against the Texans. He lit up this defense and he's hoping to do it again for his. With an ankle injury that came against the Browns, 
returns for the Texans defense. Noah. Yeah, KT, a matchup, and both teams filling a lot more hole as they get set for this one. Kevin Stefanski wasn't on the sideline for the wild card game in 2020. The win against Pittsburgh had COVID for that one. Told us with a sly smile he's excited to be back here tonight. And for D'Amico Ryans, he was on the first team ever to win the division for Houston as a linebacker. Now as a rookie head coach, he said they're equally as special to him. Feels like he's equally a part of this team as well, leading the team to a 10-7 and record. Our officials today, Clay Martin is our referee. It is mostly his normal crew, but with the postseason, you do mix and match a little bit. Tab Slaughter, a new button as the Empire. Clay Martin still the head of the snake of this group and doing a great job. This is a reward for officials across the NFL to actually get these postseason opportunities. Joe Flacco and the Ravens offense will get the football start. Houston won the toss, elected to defer. That means Kaimi Fairbairn will send it away. James Prochet is way back deep, and Fairbairn, who missed the extra point in the fourth quarter last week against Indianapolis, will get another opportunity to kick it to Prochet. Well, when these teams met on Christmas Eve, the very first play from scrimmage for Cleveland was a long pass from Joe Flacco to Amari Cooper. They would hook up for 11 catches, 265 yards in the game, and that's a big focal point for this Texans defense, staying on top of Amari Cooper today. Best time of the year. Waited from September until now, and the NFL playoffs are officially here. Prochet will let it sail into the end zone, and we meet the Cleveland offense. Joe Flacco, Delaware. Jerome Ford, Cincinnati. Amari Cooper, Alabama. Eliza Moore, Ole Miss. David Bell, Purdue University. David Njoku, all about the U. Jaron Christian, Louisville. Joel Batonio, Nevada. Ethan Posick, LSU. Wyatt Teller, Virginia Tech. James Hudson III, Cincinnati. Christian and Hudson, replacements at those two tackles, lost their normal starters early in the season have been playing without their starting running back Nick Chubb from the second game on and of course Deshaun Watson out for the season from the midway point play action on first down as they do a whole lot with Flacco he will dump it down to his running back and Jerome Ford will dive forward for a first down this is what Joe Flacco's done so well play action in particular yeah. he has excelled in a Browns uniform play action and first down play action has been a big part of the offense built around Flacco and Right away, one of the interior defensive linemen for the Texans down, but it's, it's pretty amazing. He started five games. He sat out last week against Cincinnati, but throwing the ball down the field, 13 touchdowns. He has thrown interceptions. And he is not afraid to put the ball downfield. He has great confidence in Amari Cooper and David Njoku. Sheldon Rankins will jog off the field. A big part of this interior, uh, much improved Houston defense in year one under D'Amico Ryan, especially against the run throughout the season. Cleveland loves to keep it on the ground, even without the two tackles. They've thrown it more with Flacco, and they will go back to the air again on first down. Another rifle over the middle goes to David Bell for a modest gain across the 40 against this Houston defense. Will Anderson, Alabama. Malik Collins, Center High School. Sheldon Rankins, Louisville. Jonathan Grenard, Hiram High School. Christian Harris, Alabama. Denzel Perryman, the U. Blake Cashman, Minnesota. Derek Stingley Jr., LSU. DeAndre Houston Carson, William and Mary. Jalen Petrie, Baylor. Steve Nelson, Northside High School. D'Amico Ryan's thrilled to get Jonathan Grenard back in the lineup. Has had such a productive season leading the team in sacks, tackles for losses, and QB hits. Second and four. Hand off for it. He's dumped in the backfield. Penetration comes from Denzel Perriman, and the veteran gets there in a hurry. Yeah, Perriman just read this quickly. A run blitz. Watch him right here. Reads it and gets right into the backfield untouched. A negative yardage play bringing up third and ten. Exactly what the Texans wanted on that play. Physical linebacker in a ninth year out of Miami. He'll go to the sideline third and nine. KT mentioned the return of Grenard, but Will Anderson Jr., their other edge rusher, did not play at all in the game on Christmas Eve. Happy to have both of them back. Kareem Hunt in there on this third down play. Flacco deep drop, feeling the pressure, gets rid of it. Low, caught, Hunt, and he loses yards. This Houston defense gets a stand. D'Amico Ryans talked about getting the field off the field on third down, and the crowd playing its role early. Well, that was Grenard who caused that incompletion. He just took the right tackle and pushed him right back into the lap of Joe Flacco and forced the throw away. 
Grenard immediate impact. That'll bring out Corey Bajorquez, who's actually right-handed. He'll kick it away to Desmond King. He punts with his left foot. I've never heard that before. <laughs> and he's really improved his directional punting this year in his sixth year from New Mexico. Oh, nearly blocked. A great rush by this special teams unit, and a fair catch is made inside the 20 by Desmond King. So an early stand, 52-yard punt to flip the field, and we'll get